nostalgia. It's always a wonderful thing to experience from watching old cartoons that you love or by playing your favourite video games growing up. It's a wonderful experience. And for me, nothing screams more nostalgia to me than the Halo franchise. The history of Halo is always a fascinating thing to me. Originally, Halo was going to be a very different game. Originally created by Bungie before 343 Industries took over, Halo was originally going to be a real-time strategy game for the Mac and Windows operating systems, but later changed into a third-person action game. Then, Microsoft acquired Bungie and made it a launch title for the original Xbox. Then later down the timeline, Bungie decided to change Halo from a third-person shooter to a first-person shooter. Pretty much everybody knows the history of Halo at this point, so I'm only going to give a short version of how Halo came to be. I could go on and on and on and on about how many awards Bungie's Halo has won, but that's not the point of this video. Plus, with the release of Halo Infinite and its success, depending on how you look at it, I thought what better way to look at a game that started it all. Halo Combat Evolved. However, the version I'm holding in my hand, I'm not going to have a look at. I'll be looking at Halo 1 on the Master Chief Collection for the PC. Pretty much there's nothing different about it except for smoother frames and access to the PC exclusive multiplayer maps, which I will be talking about later. I was originally going to film the Xbox version here, but uh, unfortunately, tragedy had struck. My Roxio HD Pro had passed away. <laughs> Now I'm not saying that like Halo 1 must always be played on the PC and the PC is the only way to play Halo 1, it's just with the circumstances I've got at the moment, um, I've got a better chance of recording it on my computer. Also think of this as a thank you for helping me reach over 100 subscribers! I honestly can't thank you guys enough, I'm glad you guys are enjoying my content and subscribing to the channel. So as the 100 sub special, why don't we have a look at Halo Combat Evolved? Wait, hang on. Me! That's right, it's me! After you shot me! Wait, hang on, how did you survive that gunshot to the head? Well, um, you see. Hang on, why are you dressed up like Reverse Flash? Well, if you let me finish, then I... Also, how come you don't have the same sound effect for your entrance? SHUT UP! Let me finish my goddamn sentence, and then you'll know! Fair? Anyhow. Anyhow. <clears throat> yes! It is I, Reverse Future You! You see, after you shot me in the head, I thought I was going to die. Thankfully, I had my skin regeneration perk on, so it only graced my skin. That sounds incredibly stupid. When I got up, I decided to look up one of your old videos. I found your top 5 Xbox 360 games. Knowing that Halo is your all-time favorite game series, I expected at least one of the games to be on your list. The amount of disgust and anger I felt that you didn't include one Halo game on that list was so unbearable. I dedicated myself to calling you a hypocrite and destroying your life. And that's how I became Reverse Future Tom. Dude. That's kinda cringe. What? Mate, you decided to go on an old video of mine where I was clearly trying to be different and failing at it. And plus, if I included any Halo game on that list, it would just be generic. But, to be fair, you do have a point. I should have included any of the Halo 360 era games on that list. But I've grown, you see, and clearly that video had a lot of flaws. It doesn't warrant my life being destroyed, does it? Also, how come you decided to look up one of my old videos after being shot? Well, I don't give a shit! Prepare to know why you suck! Number one! Do you still have that skin regeneration perk on? Uh, well, um, no, I kind of used it up during my, um, expedition. Good. Oh. Anyhow. And there it is. One of the most iconic gaming themes in history. Beautifully composed by the great Martin O'Donnell, who did the entire soundtrack for the Halo franchise. Well, for the Bungie era of Halo. It's crazy to me of how I could just get excited for a game just on the menu music alone. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go and change my pants. As you can see, you have four different options for difficulty. Easy, Normal, Heroic or Legendary. 
Of course, I'm an absolute pro with this game. I mean, like, I've played this game more times than I can count. So it's only obvious that I picked the most obvious difficulty. Before we get into the first level, the Pillar of Autumn, I'll be thanking each stage from a town to see how I feel about each level. Also, I'm kind of bummed out that the Master Chief Collection didn't include the iconic loading screen for Halo 1. Excuse me, I need to go and change my pants again. My like, goddamn Martin, how can you make a loading screen sound so good whilst also sounding so haunting and mysterious? Anyhow, we cut to the first level, with an odd droning noise with our first shot being the Halo Ring. Immediately, the game hits you with questions like, what is that ring and why is it so important? We then get a speech by Captain Keys about what is happening at the moment. If did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. We made a blind jump. How did they- Get here first? The Covenant ships have always been faster. As for tracking us all the way from Reach, at light speed my maneuvering options were limited. We were running dark, yes? Until we decelerated, no one could have missed the hole we tore in subspace. They were waiting for us on the far side of the planet. So, where do we stand? Our fighters are mopping up the last of their recon picket now, nothing serious. But I've isolated approach signatures for multiple CCS-class battle groups, make it three capital ships per group. And in about 90 seconds, they'll be all over us. Again, we're hit with more questions, like, the Covenant? Who are they? Why are we running from them? Reach? What's that about? Well, if you use your big brain like a big boy, or girl, girls, girls can have big brains too. Am I cancelled yet? As far as we know, we're at war with a faction called the Covenant. They've been chasing us from Reach, and they've always had better technology than us. And I know what you're thinking, just shh, just pretend it's 2001, and we don't know anything about it, and you're just learning this. Keys activates Combat Alert Alpha. As this is going on, he calls on Cortana, voiced by Jen Taylor, an intelligent AI, and an AI girlfriend. What? Why are you looking at me like that? He calls on her to... And Cortana. Hmm? Let's give our old friends a warm welcome. I've already begun. We then get this cool montage of the Marines preparing for a fight, whilst a variation of Brothers in Arms plays in the background. We then get a speech from one of the best characters in Halo, and in fiction in general, Sergeant Johnson, voiced by the great David Scully. Even though we haven't really been introduced to Sergeant Johnson and didn't really find out his name until the sequel, but shh! Fun fact, depending on the difficulty that you choose, Sergeant Johnson's speech is different. Once again, it is our job to finish with the Fly Force start. We are leaving this ship platoon and engaging the Covenant on solid ground. When we meet the enemy, we will rip their skulls from their spines and toss them away laughing! Man, we let those dumb bugs out to the middle of nowhere to keep from getting their filthy claws on Earth. But we stumbled onto something that's so hot for that they're scrambling over each other to get it. Well, I don't care if it's God's own anti-son-of-a-bitch machine or a giant hula hoop, we're not gonna let them have it. What we will let them have is a belly full of lead and a pool of their own blood to drown in. As we cut to more crewmates preparing for combat, we finally get introduced to our main character with the most epic music ever. Right. Let's thaw him out. Okay. Bringing low-level systems online. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. He's hot! Blowing the pins in five! You are Master Chief. A super soldier that rivals the greatness of Captain America and Doom Guy and it's quick to learn that you are an important figure in this war. We get introduced to a quick tutorial segment of how to look around, how to move, and how your shields work. You see, in this game, you have two health bars, your shield and your health. Shields obviously protect your health, 
but once it's depleted then you'll be wide open for any shots that might kill you. Luckily, shields can regenerate when you're not in combat, but with health, you need to find a health kit. As the tutorial level ends, we are suddenly attacked! Oh God. They're trying to get through the door! Security! Intruders in the oh, too. Sam! Sam! Oh no, not Sam, the tutorial guy. No. Come on, we've got to get the hell out of here! This way! No! Not the yellow man! Well, shit, looks like we gotta get out of here. Um, where do I go? Oh, Jesus! Hey, excuse me, guys, I need to know where to go. Oh, uh, uh, okay, never mind. Aha! A door! This will get me where I need to go. Aliens? We're fighting goddamn aliens? Alright, you two, protect me from that thing! The captain needs you on the bridge ASAP. Better follow me. Anyhow, after going through a goddamn war zone, we finally meet up with Captain Keys. Keys gives us a quick catch up, explaining how things aren't going so well. Hmm. Yeah, I can see why. Cortana, meanwhile, brags about her mad gamer skills before the cannon for the ship is hit and put offline. Clearly, the Covenant has better gamer skills than Cortana, it seems. Keys initiates the evacuation of the Pillar of Autumn and says that he's going to try and land the Autumn onto the ring they found. We also get this brilliant line with, again, epic music by Martin. With all due respect, sir, this war has enough dead heroes. I appreciate your concern, Cortana, but it's not up to me. The protocol is clear. Destruction or capture of a shipboard AI is absolutely unacceptable, and that means you're leaving ship. Lock in a selection of emergency landing zones, upload them to my neural lace, and then sort yourself for a heart transfer. Aye, aye, sir. It's not much of the speech, but it's the music that goes with the speech. It tells us that, like, we've been doing this war for a very long time, and we've lost so many heroes through this conflict. And the way Cortana says her line, with a little bit of sadness in her voice, tells us that she's probably lost a lot of friends through this conflict, and now that Keys is probably going to be added to that list. It's great. Honestly, it's great. Keys gives you the order to get Cortana off the ship, which makes you think, oh, God, not an escort mission! But this one has a bit more of a risk to it. Key states that if the Covenant capture Cortana, they will learn all of our weapons, war plans, and Earth. Meaning that the Covenant has not found Earth yet, which is odd because knowing they have greater technology than us, then surely they would use their version of Google Maps to find Earth. Either way, there is a greater risk losing your companion, so it makes the player more dedicated to the mission. Now you may be thinking, um, how exactly is Cortana coming with us? Don't worry, the game's got you covered on that. Good luck, Master Chief. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Cortana. I know we just met, but I didn't bring any protection with me. See now? You don't have to worry about a companion accompanying you, since your companion is in your head! Finally, we get our first weapon. I don't keep it loaded, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. What's the point, then? Why bother giving me a gun if it ain't loaded, then, you damn wet? Okay, fine. I guess we gotta find ammo for it, then. Ha! Ah, alien! <laughs> Die, you alien scum! Wait, hang on. So it was loaded! You son of a bitch! You don't get to lie to Master Chief! What the hell are you doing? Security to the bridge! The Master Chief has gone rampant! Take him down, boys! Anyhow, as we continue, we finally come across one of the most iconic weapons in the Halo franchise. The Assault Rifle, which is beautiful to behold. A machine gun that holds 60 bullets per mag and destroys any alien to come near it with one of the most satisfying sounds from a gun I have heard in any video game. In fact, all of the guns in Halo 1 have such a satisfying firing sound to each one. Heck, even swapping your weapons is satisfying to listen to! Anyhow, better take a third gun with me. You never know what you're facing out there. Hmm. I'll take the plasma rifle. Wait, hang on. I can only carry two weapons?! Oh no! Imagine my shock! 
Yes, in Halo, you can only carry two weapons. Unlike other FPS shooters at the time, like Doom or Goldeneye, where you can carry as many weapons as you like, Halo restricts you to two weapons to make the game more challenging, which later FPS games sort of followed on later. Going back onto the guns, one of the things I really like in Halo is the Covenant weapons. You see, unlike our weapons, the Covenants operate a bit differently. Instead of bullets, they fire energy, specifically plasma energy. And instead of reloading, they instead have a cooldown meter, meaning you can't just hold down the fire button, otherwise the weapon stops and lets out excess heat. Essentially, what you get is a weapon that doesn't need to reload, but just make sure you don't overuse it. Until the Needler comes in and ruins my point about the weapons, but we haven't got there yet, so sh In this level, we are introduced to our first two enemies. The Grunts, these little aliens that can be easily dealt with, if anything, they're cannon fodder, and the Elites, who are more tricky to deal with, since they can dodge around the map and aren't afraid to deck you in the face as if you've just insulted their favourite football team. Additionally, they have shields as well, so you can't instantly kill them like the Grunts, but once their shield is down, go to town on them. Throughout the levels of Halo, you can also pick up power-ups. Only two, though, however. These come in two flavours. Overshield, which gives an additional two layers of shield energy, or Camouflage, which... I mean, it says it in the name. Oh, before I forget, you also have a melee attack that is RIDICULOUSLY powerful if you hit an enemy from the back. <laughs> God, I just love the music in this game! I know it seems like I'm going to continuously ramble on about the music of Halo, but I don't care. This music is honestly one of the best I've ever heard, and it comes in at the right moments just to make you feel more immersed in the world of Halo. No! Looks like the Covenant to you, huh? Hmm, I wonder why they would want to do that. Near the end of the level, we are introduced to our grenades, which I must say, God Damn, the human nukes feel like you're throwing a goddamn nuke! You do also get plasma grenades, but I'll get to those later. As Cortana says, we need to get to the last lifeboat before it launches. We do so, and this cutscene plays. Oh no! Oh no! Now would be a very good time to leave! Punch it. Ah, sir! We're gonna make it, aren't we, sir? I don't want to die out here! What do I get a bad feeling from that? AGAIN! Why does Martin put one of the best songs from the game during an emergency landing cutscene and make it so goddamn epic?! God damn it, Martin! You can't keep making me change my pants! Anyhow, we finished the first level. What did I think of it? It's a great solid level that introduces the basic controls and the story of the game and I continuously always replay the first level because it is that replayable and good. So, a solid 10 for me. We enter the second level of the game with a rough start. We're coming in too fast! I'm sure it's fine. I mean, if I can survive it, then... Uh, oh... Oh... oh mm. Never mind. When you finally first step foot onto Halo, you feel the sense of awe. Even back in 2001, this must have felt like wonder. The beautiful landscapes with luscious waterfalls, and the enemies constantly shooting at you. Diving deeper into the landscape, we discover more marines who, this time, actually survived the crash. <laughs> Must I repeat to myself how GODLY this music is! What's playing right now is Brothers in Arms, my favourite soundtrack from the game. It perfectly encapsulates fighting aliens with your comrades. Ah yes, JPEG Planet. 
we are introduced to Echo 419, our sort of workhorse for getting around Halo. She drops off a warthog so we can search for three other crash sites that contain marines. This is where we get introduced to the vehicle section in Halo. Personally, one of the things I think that separated Halo from other FBF shooters at the time, like Quake or Doom, was the introduction of playable vehicles. Like the guns, we have a variety of vehicles, some human, some covenant, each with their own uses. Like this Warthog, you have three seats in it, one for driving, one for the passenger, and a third for to mount the minigun. It's really useful when playing with AI and teammates. As we are travelling to the three zones, we discover this cave that Cortana says This cave is not a natural formation. Someone built it, so it must lead somewhere. That sentence leaves us with more questions like who built the ring and what was its purpose? We travel to each of the three zones to help the marines clear out the enemies and Echo 419 picks them up. Simple as pie. Fun fact! If all the marines die in the zone, you get this defeated dialogue from Cortana. We couldn't save them. I recommend that we stay near the beacon and wait for extraction. In the same level, we are introduced to one of my favorite weapons, the Sniper Rifle. A powerful four-round rifle that easily guns down any enemies with such a beautiful and distinct sound. Nice shot! Oh yeah, there's also um, a new enemy. The jackals, they have, um, shields, I, I, I don't know what the fuck you want to say. After rescuing the marines from the three crash sites, we get news that Captain Keys is alive somehow. No, really, somehow, I don't know how in the name of John Halo that you can crash this giant goddamn ship onto this ring and not die. Well, either way, the level is done. So what did I think about it? It's a 9 out of 10 for me. The only thing that stopped it being a 10 was that we had to save the marines four times, so it felt a bit repetitive. In this level, you have to rescue Keys as he's being held on a Covenant ship. This is the part where the game tells you that this is the sniping section of the game. How do I know this? Because you literally start with a sniper rifle, you dummy! One of the things I do like in this mission is that if you press the flashlight toggle whilst aiming with the sniper, you get a night vision aim, which, to be honest, I didn't really use that much. It's a cool gag, if anything. Also, I know this is supposed to be the stealth part of the game, but we don't have any silencer, so the Covenant will instantly know where you are as soon as you shoot, so it doesn't really matter if you want to be a sneaky assassin when you get detected a second later. But hey, the sniper still feels great to fire, so it somewhat redeems itself with that. Plus, great music is always a plus. I like it how, even though there was plenty of explosions and gunshots, the Covenant stationed around the corner didn't even notice. Maybe they have alien earbuds on. Wonder what they're listening to. <laughs> Did I ever tell you how great password grenades are? They're great. We get to the ship and clear out the area. Or so we think. Hmm, I'm guessing that's the boss. These are hunters. Powerful tanks that can easily kill you if you're not careful. You can kill them normally, but really the best spot to hit them is their exposed back. Thankfully, I have a war crime in my hand, so they're not a problem. After dealing with them, we finally enter the Truth and Reconciliation, only to discover that there is no one there. Ah, oh, come on guys, I bought the Wii games for nothing! Ooh, shiny lightsaber! <laughs> oh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an energy sword, probably one of the most terrifying and iconic weapon in the game. Those things can instantly slice through you like butter, so if you see an elite carry one of those things, you better start praying, because boy, they ain't got no time to hear you speak! We deal with the welcoming party, only to discover that we can't get through this door, so that means we have to find a way around it to open it from the other side. Even though the marines can come with us, like, we're not driving a vehicle through here, so wouldn't it be better if the marines come with us? I don't know, maybe I don't have enough of a static face to find out. Even though the Covenant ship part of the level is full of narrow and confusing hallways, I do like the details of the ship, from the purple aesthetics to the alien sounds of doors opening. It's a nice package. We get the door opened and continue our way through the ship. Before I forget, there's a weapon that I forgot to talk about, and that would be the Needler. 
This Covenant weapon is unique because it's like an SMG, except once enough needles hit the target, they will explode, killing the enemy instantly. Plus they follow the direction of the target, which would be scary if the needles weren't following up on a dial-up connection. Yeah, to be honest, the needle is not really my favourite weapon in CE. Even though it is quite powerful, the fact that the needles travel at such a slow distance and the ammunition for it is quite small, it's, it's kind of rubbish. Really, I only use it as a last resort if all the other guns are out of ammo. After slogging through enemies, we finally reach keys. <sighs> Coming here was reckless. You two know better than this. Bitch, have you seen the amount of fucking work that I did just to save your sorry little ass? While the Covenant had us locked up in here, I overheard the guards talking about this ring world. They call it... Halo. Hey! He did it! He said the word! To cut it short, Halo is revealed to be a super weapon, and apparently the Covenant holds it like a religious significance, and the Covenant is looking for the control room to Halo. Keys gives us a new mission to find the control room, as we prepare to leave the ship, which now turns into... Uh, an escort mission. It's not that bad, per se, but if Keys dies, then it's game over. What? <laughs> I ain't saying shit. <laughs> Here, we call for Echo 419, only to be rejected, just like in real life. 419 states that we need to find our own ride, with probably the most sarcastic sorry I've ever heard. You're better off finding your own ride. And yeah, that would be funny if I didn't have the goddamn captain with me! And that's going on with a port card, Echo 419. Key says that if we can find a Covenant dropship, he can pilot us out of here. Which makes me question how he can pilot an alien ship, but I'm not going to question that. Of course, we get to the dropship without listening to the most epic song in Halo. Ah, Honestly, I will never get tired of hearing that song. We make our escape, and the level ends. This level is an 8 out of 10, because of the escort mission and that sometimes the ship can be a bit difficult to navigate sometimes. Next, we go on to one of my favourite levels in the game, the Silent Cartographer. I kid you not, the opening of this level hits hard. Clearing the beach out all Normandy style. Except for our commerce not being instantly gunned down like flies, but shut your f. Somebody order a warthog. Uh, yes, I was told that it would come with chips. As Cortana states, we have to find the map room. We do so only to be locked out of the room. Cortana contacts Keys to say that we have to shut off Halo security systems in order to get the door open. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Keys states that he might be out of contact when he arrives to, um, somewhere, so we have to find the switch to disable Halo's security system. Just to sidetrack a bit, I find it aesthetically pleasing that you can see the outside of the ring. Because even though you're on a planet, you have to remind yourself that you're on a mechanical ring. A mechanical ring that imitates Earth. It's weird and so good to look at. Back to the game, we find a pathway into the centre of the island. Go up and face- OH NO! HUNTERS! I don't have a war crime weapon with me! Oh god, this is going to be a tough fight. What? Yeah, if you couldn't tell already, the pistol in Halo 1 is extremely powerful for some unknown reason. Like, even more powerful than most of the weapons. What are we loading into the pistol? Nuclear bullets! Anyhow, bizarre pistol aside, we find an entrance to the security room, massacre everyone, and turn off the security. Now, the door to the map room is open to us. We just have to... 
make our way back up to the map room. Uh, eh, it's not that bad really. As long as you have a warthog, you're fine. I should also say as well that, again, Martin comes at us with this weird mystery music, because even though we can easily deal with the Covenant, we still don't really know a lot about Halo, so by diving more into it, it gives us this strange feeling of mystery, that we're probably going to uncover something we don't like. On our way to the room, we pick up the most powerful weapon in the game, the Rocket Launcher, ironically with the acronym SPANKER, and <laughs> let me tell you, it certainly lives up to that name. Even though you can only carry a short amount of ammo for it, the two rockets you get to fire clear up any obstacle with ease. Um, I get the feeling that I've done something wrong by turning off the security. We find the map room and discover where the control room is located. Cortana tries to contact Captain Keys, but Echo 419 tells us that The captain has dropped out of contact, Cortana. His ship may be out of range or having equipment problems. Eh, I'm sure he's fine. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Now, all we need to do now is to get back to the surface, so we can get 419 to take us to the control center. Not without leaving any Covenant out alive, of course. And what better way to do that with this epic theme? We get to Echo 419 and discover that the location to the control center is underground, so we descend deep into Halo as the mission ends. So what did I think of it? Well, if you couldn't really tell, it's a solid 10 for me, for the reasons I've already outlined. We finally get to one of my favorite levels of all time, Assault on the Control Room. Before we even begin, we get this brilliant line, I would have been your daddy. Oh, would you now? After making this grunt piss his pants, we begin the Assault on the Control Room. <laughs> One of the things that really stick out to me on this level is the sound design. The large, deep echoes of the underground rooms of Halo, the sound of the doors opening and closing, and the sounds of your footsteps just seem to be aesthetically pleasing to hear. As we venture deeper into the ring, we come across snow. For some strange reason, it's snowing underground. Even Cortana seemed confused about the strange weather. We suddenly get a transmission from Fireteam Zulu, even though it's a bit weird how our allies followed us here because it seemed like it was only Master Chief and Cortana who found it. And as far as I know, they only told Echo 419 where it was. Unless 419 told the UNSC Marines where to find us like the dirty little snitch! Anyhow, we have to get to Fireteam Zulu with, what else, another epic score from Martin. Don't do this, don't take this away from me! Dang it. Okay, second try. Haha! Get sticked on, you bit! Third time's the charm. Completely fine. 
At this point, we might as well let Martin direct all of the OSTs and video games. We finally reach to ground level and help the marines out. Ah yeah, Warthog time! Wait, hang on, what the shit is that? That, my fellow Spartans and Marines, is a Wraith, a Covenant tank. I mean, from that description alone, you know what it is capable of. As we drive across the winter landscape, we finally reach the best vehicle in the game. The motherfucking Scorpion. The human tank, basically. But unlike the Wraith, you also get a minigun as a second firing option. Ha! Look at that Hunter, thinking he could easily destroy me. Well, guess again, bitch! I don't know, Johnson. I'm dead. Okay, let's try that again. We finally reach Fireteam Zulu and help them out. We need to scale this cliff, but those Covenant are blocking it. So we do what we do best. Murder them all. After helping out Fireteam Zulu, we now resume our task of finding the control center, and they don't even join us. Ungrateful bastards. Ah yes, smooth jazz over the massacre of my enemy. Be gone, heathens! You shall not stop my noble... Um, is that breathing guy here? Again, credit to Martin to make us feel a sense of dread because we are still on an alien ring, so we don't know what else it might be hiding. Another bridge to cross, more enemies to slay. Now, of course, I'm not blind. I am aware that this level does feel a bit repetitive sometimes because the rooms do look the same, as well as the pathways, indoor area, bridge, indoor with elevator, bridge, indoor, bridge, etc. So after a while it does get tiring, but thankfully, the music still keeps me entertained at least. We reach another bridge and, fun fact, if you're not quick enough you can hop onto this banshee here and skip a chunk of the game to reach the control center. And here we are, one final push towards the control center, and with that over, we finally did it. We finally reach Halo's control center. This is it, Halo's control center. Martin, why are you playing scary music? We insert Cortana into the control center as Master Chief what asks sort of her how we can use what Halo against the about? Covenant. Let's stay focused. Halo, how do we use it against the Covenant? This ring isn't a cudgel, you barbarian. You know what? Screw you, Cortana. I'll find my own girlfriend. Hello, I am the girlfriend, uh, you, um, you are loved, um, you, you are so fantastic, baby, um. Dude, you've been listening uh, to that for like five hours, are you alright? Um, you're, you're the oh, okay, coolest guy, you know, yes. love, you, I'm, I'm gonna fuck it. Cortana tells us that Halo also serves another it's purpose, forerunner. apparently it's Forerunner, as she makes a horrifying discovery. Yes, the Forerunner built this place, what they called a fortress world, in order to... No, that can't be. Oh, those Covenant fools. They must have known. There must have been signs. Slow down. You're losing me. The Covenant found something. Buried in this ring. Something horrible. And now, they're afraid. Something buried? Where? The Captain. We've got to stop the Captain. Keys? What the are weapons we... cache he's looking for. It's not really... We can't let him get inside. I don't understand. There's no time. Get out of here. Find Keys. Stop him. Before it's too late! And with that horrifying note, the level ends. Obviously it's a straight down 10 for me. Yes, even though I've died lots of times and the level keeps on going and going, I still really like this level because it was the first ever Halo level that I've ever played 
and every time I play it, it brings back this nostalgic feeling from the weapons, the sounds, the music and the gameplay, everything fits together perfectly. On to the next level, FIFA 3 Guilty Spark. Wait, hang on. FIFA 3 Guilty Spark. FIFA 3 Industries. Hmm. Right away, things don't seem to be right. A downed pelican and Covenant running away. Something in that entrance scared them away. So naturally, we go in because duh, keys, duh. Oh hey, fellow marine. I'll blow your brains out. Get away from me! Don't touch me, you freaks! I won't be like you. I'll die first. Find your own hiding place. The monsters are everywhere. Play dead. That's what I did. Play dead. They took the live ones. Oh god, I can still hear them. Monsters. Ah! Ah! Just leave me alone! Look, just calm. Oh, okay. Let's hear you out. They're gone! Get it? Gone! They won't get me! Oh gosh! Oh god, I don't wanna be like you! Please no! Please no! Okay, now that you're out of ammo, let's talk this OI! He'll be fine. Obviously, it makes us the player feel terrified. Halo has a creature that terrified us and the Covenant. As we delve deeper into the facility, we come across this door and discover the body of a Marine. We decide to go through his helmet recordings, and this is what happened. Which is weird, right? I mean, look at it. Something scrambled the insides. What's that? Plasma scoring? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there was an accident, you know, friendly fire or something? What do we have, Sergeant? Looks like a Covenant patrol. Badass elite units. All KIA. Real pretty. Friend of yours? Nah, we just met. Right, well, let's get this door open. I'll try, sir, but it looks like these Covenant work pretty hard to lock it down. Just do it, son. Yes, sir. Got a bad feeling about this. Boy, you always got a bad feeling about Captain something. Sark, can you hear me? What's going on, soldier? He's got contact! Slap them! But they're not coming in! They're, they're just staring through us! What's the clown? No! Corporal! Do you copy? Over! Mendoza, get your ass back up to second squad's position and find out what the hell is going on. But I don't have time for your lip, soldier. I gave you an Sarge, order. Sarge, listen. What is that? Where's that coming from, Everywhere. Mendoza? I don't. There, Mira. Ah, ah, hold get still. Out. Hold get still. Out. Let him have it. Ah. Sergeant, we're surrounded. God damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapon! There are too many, Sergeant! Don't even think about it, Marine. Oh, this is loco! Back here, Marine. That's an order. Jenkins! Well, that was... interesting. We then get attacked by those creatures that terrified us and the Covenant. <laughs> what? Those pieces of popcorn there? Come on, man. Surely it's not those that got us scared.
Okay, yep, no, I'm scared. All of a sudden, Halo changes from, yeah, let's kill some aliens, to, holy shit, this is now turning into Dead Space. Even though Dead Space came out later, but shut up, I'm the one doing the review, so I can do what I want. Basically, we are introduced to The Flood, a parasitic alien that can infiltrate live or dead bodies and turn them into this. Which makes you think, all those aliens you killed and the marines that died on your journey, all you did was just provide The Flood with food. And I really think turning Halo's security off wasn't such a bright idea. Hey, don't look at me, that was Cortana's idea. Of course, we can't introduce a zombie level without including the iconic weapon in any zombie medium. The shotgun, baby! Seriously, this shotgun will be your main working horse when dealing with the Flood. Luckily, they just run up to you and hit you. Okay, hacks! I call hacks! Yeah, so the Flood can also shoot you with any weapon they like, which is just... Great! Luckily, we managed to get out of the facility with some actual alive marines. Thank God! Let's get out of here! As we fight our way through the flood, we make it to this strange tower and get teleported by this floating light bulb. It introduces itself as D43 Guilty Spark. Ha! That's the name of the level! Ha! He's the monitor of Installation 4, which I'm guessing is this Halo ring. He says that his task is to stop the flood from leaving the ring, and he needs our assistance. So he just teleports us with him to... Uh, the library. But before we get into that dumpster fire of a level, this level is surprisingly somewhat short. But it's a good short. A 10 out of 10 for me. I like the way how the flood is introduced, and the fact you get a shotgun as well, so that makes me happy. Anyhow, on to the library. So the goal of this level is to get the index, that floating green thing in the beginning cutscene, to apparently activate Halo. Simple enough, with my shotgun I can easily- wait, 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 hang on, WHERE'S MY SHOTGUN?! Okay, fine, let's just continue. Now you may think to yourself, HELL YEAH, A ZOMBIE LEVEL, I'M GONNA WIPE THE FLOOR WITH THEM! But trust me, by the end of this level, you'll think to yourself, DEAR GOD, I REGRET MY EXISTENCE. First off, you're constantly surrounded by the Flood. Yes, I know that's why they're called the Flood, but shut up and let me make my case, judge! This wouldn't be bad if you were A, not either getting riddled with bullets, B, having little popcorn constantly jumping over you, especially if you get these Nikocado avocado looking ass things that birth more little popcorns when they die, which may I remind you, hurt you if you get too close, or C, just the Flood not knowing personal space. At least the Flood don't carry very powerful weapons. Yes, much to my absolute delight, the Flood can fire rockets. Fantastic. Fantastic! Then to cap off this shit Sunday, the level is so goddamn long and uninteresting that all you are doing is going through the same hallways and lifts over and over and over again to a point where you are hoping that you are near the end of the level. Also doesn't help where there are segments where 343 just fucks off to open the door once you have to do a one-man stand to fight the flood until the door opens! Really, the only good things I can say about the level is that you do get some health kits and overshields to help, you do get these sentries that help you fight the flood, and finally, because the flood use weapons, you do constantly have ammo and weapons to fight. After slogging through this shithole, we finally get the index as 343 teleports us to the next level. Thank God! So obviously it's a 3 out of 10, and I don't think I need to say why. 343 teleports us to the control center as we make our way to activate Halo. And wow, I gotta say guys, what an absolute adventure this was. Activate Halo, and save the galaxy, and get some mad bitches. Or so we think. Cortana stops the activation of the Index and tells us about the horrible truth about Halo. We're watching you toady about helping that thing get set to slit our throats. Hold on now. He's a friend. Oh, I didn't realize. He's your pal, is he? Your chum? Do you have any idea what that bastard almost made you do? Yes. Activate Halo's defenses and destroy the Flood, which is why we brought the Index to the Control Center. You mean this? A construct in the core? That is absolutely unacceptable. Sod off! 
What in madness? I shall purge you at once! You sure that's a good idea? How? How? How dare you? I'll... Do what? I have the index. You can just float and sputter. Enough. The flood is spreading. If we activate Halo's defenses, we can wipe them out. You have no idea how this ring works, do you? Why the Forerunners built it? Halo doesn't kill Flood, it kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. We're all equally edible. The only way to stop the Flood is to starve them to death. And that's exactly what Halo is designed to do. Wipe the galaxy clean of all sentient life. You don't believe me? Ask him. Is it true? More or less. Technically, this installation's pulse has a maximum effective radius of 25,000 light years. But once the others follow suit, this galaxy will be quite devoid of life. Or at least any life with sufficient biomass to sustain the flood. Okay, so now we fully understand what Halo was for. Halo was built by the Forerunners to contain a species called the Flood. The Flood was such a major threat to the galaxy that the Forerunners built Halo with another function. Just in case the Flood ever broke out, there would be a firing mechanism for Halo which would wipe out every sentient life in the galaxy. So then the Flood would basically just starve to death. It's kind of horrifying seeing these beautiful landscapes of Halo from the luscious green, the beautiful waterfalls and the stunning scenery not knowing that it contains a horrifying alien and a purpose. After learning the truth, Fearful 3 asks us to give him Cortana, and obviously we're not going to give away our AIGF, so Fearful 3 teleports away to... I don't know, his room? <laughs> it's here that we are introduced to the final enemy of the game, these flying drones called sentries. They fire a constant beam at you, which doesn't do a lot of damage, but when facing a group of them, it can be quite difficult. Luckily, they are especially weak to plasma weapons, so a plasma rifle or the plasma pistol will easily take care of them. Cortana tells us that in order to stop 343, we need to destroy Halo. She continues by saying that we need a starship explosion in order to destabilize the ring. She suggests that we use the fusion reactors of the Pillar of Autumn to trigger the massive explosion. That didn't happen. Moving on. Cortana also suggests that we need to find a way to distract the 3 just in case he or his sentinels find a way to fire Halo without using the index. So she suggests that we break Halo's primary firing mechanisms. As we head down the structure, Cortana tells us that we should take one of the banshees the Covenant has left. That way we can reach the pulse generators. It's here that we get one of the best vehicles in the game, the Banshee. Even though we already got one in a previous level, but that one doesn't count because that was more of an exploit than something for the player to use, so shut your gob! With the Banshee, it's one of the only vehicles in this game that allows you to fly around the map. The Banshee comes with two weapons, the standard pulse rifles, and a plasma... bomb? missile? Either way, it creates an explosion. But they are quite delicate, one good placed grenade can easily kill it. So if anything, the Banshee is a glassed cannon. It's great to use, and it's got powerful weapons, but it can break easily. Eh, it's not a big deal, I'll just quickly get it to it. God damn it! After reaching the first firing mechanism, we need to destroy it. And how do we do that? We just stand near it. Yeah, kind of... Kind of anti-climatic, isn't it? Cortana does say that she uses your suit's energy shields to destroy it, but I like to think that Chief's odour is that bad that the smell could just destroy machinery. Luckily, we don't have to worry about the flood showing- OH GOD DAMN IT! Well, at least they don't have their rockets. Look, I know it seems like I don't really like the Flood, when that's not really true. I do like them, they are a horrifying enemy to face, and I like their designs, but they are annoying to face sometimes, since they can take any weapon on the field, and the fact they can easily get up in your face, and especially when you've recently just finished the library, you just get annoyed at them easily. Also it doesn't really help when you're on a narrow bridge with those exploding bastards, so at this point you might as well make a list of all the different ways to die, Oh yeah, did I also get to mention that there is a Banshee shooting at you as well? Ah, whatever, at least we got through the exit and... Um... Hi? Well, um... This is certainly... 
awkward. We finally reached ground level and we... Anyhow, after going through a, um, easy trial, we reach the second firing mechanism and destroy it. Afterwards, Cortana informs us that she's found the Pillar of Autumn and that its fusion reactors are still active. However, it has a failsafe, and in order to get rid of the security, we need to get authorization from Captain Keys, or his neural implant, just in case he's... Eh, I'm sure he's fine. But first, we need to detonate one last firing mechanism. We finally reach the final weapon mechanism and destroy it. Chief suggests that we should take a ride and find keys, but Cortana tells us that will take too long. Instead, she suggests that we use a teleportation grid, similar to how 343 gets around Halo quickly, and she learned about it whilst she was in the control center. Hmm, yes, yeah, very convenient. Something tells me I'm not gonna like this. Cortana continues by saying that teleportation requires a lot of energy to pull it off, so she's going to use our suit's energy to do it. What do you think I am, Cortana? Some toy? Master Chief gives Cortana the go, and we get teleported to the next mission, which I'm... not looking forward to. Overall, this level was a 6 out of 10, mostly because of the awkward places to fight the Flood, and the Flood itself, but mainly because it's, well, it's backtracking, really. All this level is, is Assault on the Control Room, but in reverse, and without any of the great music accompanying it. And not to mention that it feels like a chore to go through. Trust me, this level took a long time to complete it, and I cut a lot of the footage out. So going back to a previous statement, I said that I was not looking forward to this mission. You're probably thinking to yourself, Oh, surely this level is at least better than the library. No. As the level starts, Cortana tells us that Keys is alive and his implants are intact, and she tries to teleport us close to Keys. data needs to be right sorry it's those little bits of humor that just really sell the game for me uh keys doesn't sound very good he probably has a cold so let's go find the captain then yay fighting the flood in our hallways my favorite as we continue we see this massive hole so it's only natural that we jump into the hole Afterwards, we need to find a way back onto the ship whilst dealing with both the Covenant and the Flood. Come on! Come on! Damn it! Oh, thank God, the gravity lift. Now all we need to do now is head for the control room and find keys, which I'm sure is going to go swell. Where the hell did that explosion even come from?! Come on, let me through, you tactical bastards! Ah. Hang on. Where did he come from? Ah, oh, god damn it! Yeah, yeah, I know, hey, trust me. I'm already feeling that myself with this level. His vitals are fading. Please, Chief, hurry! Yes, I know, Cortana, but I'm currently occupied at the- Right, you know what? You could go kiss- We finally reached the control room. Now let's go to Keys and bitch slap it for making us go through this goddamn- Oh... 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 Oh, oh my... Unfortunately, we're too late. Keys has become part of the Flood by turning into a giant tree. It's actually kind of sad because we were probably hearing his last consciousness trying to deter us away. But well, now you're probably thinking, well, bollocks, now that Keys is dead, how else are we going to get rid of the failsafe mechanisms? Well, Cortana did say that we either need him alive, or his neural implants. What he'd want us to do. Done. I have the code. We should go. <laughs> he has a hole in his face.
Okay, now that that's out of the way, what we need to do now is to get out of here. Come on, come on, let me through! One thing I should mention is that if you see a grunt with this weapon, a fuel rod cannon, after you kill it, move away from it! This is because it explodes after the grunt's death, so you don't want to do what I did and forgot it does that. Come on, come on, shit! Oh wait, this time I got- Fuck! Aha! This time I got out- Okay, I think you guys get the point. I died a lot on this level. Oi! After lots of pain, we finally escape the ship and head for the final level, the moor. This level is a 2 out of 10. Oh, you didn't like it, I didn't give an explanation of why I didn't like this level. Well, put this up for yourself and you'll understand why! After the pain and misery of the past three levels, we finally reach a proper good level this time. And sadly, the final level of the game. Every time this cutscene plays, it always gives me goosebumps. From the music, the title card, and the symbolism on display, it all just combines into this beautiful scene. It's ironic how we started on the Pillar of Autumn, and on the final level of the game, we end on the same ship. It's like we've come around full circle, and the title card perfectly fits, and the horse you rode on. So, our objective of this level is to head to the bridge. When we are there, we can use Captain Key's neural implants to overload the ship's fusion engines. Or when playing English, initiate the self-destruction sequence. The explosion should be powerful enough to destroy Halo. And can I just say I love the contrast here. From the bright energetic ship to this rusted dark burnt up ship, this level right here shows you that how backtracking should be done. And again, the sweet music that accompanies this level. It's almost kind of sad to see the state of the ship and what's happened to the crew. On this level, you'll of course be fighting the Flood in narrow hallways, which is just... Uh... But funny enough, I didn't have that much issue with it. Sentinels and what's left of the Covenant. After clearing our way to the bridge, we insert Cortana into the mainframe. She initiates the self-destruction and gives us enough time to... No. The monitor comes along and stops the countdown. So, fuck, what do we do now? Trying to take the core offline. Even if I could get the countdown restarted, I don't know what to do. How much firepower would you need to crack one of the engine shields? Not much. A well-placed grenade, perhaps, but why? Ooh, I like the sound of that. Also, hang on, a simple grenade can easily crack a ship's engines? I'm surprised the ship was even allowed to go in the first place, considering it takes one grenade to destroy an entire galactic ship! Anyhow, that's our new objective. Reach the engine room. But not make it a quick stop to the motherfucking armory! Ah, yeah, now we are- wait, hang on. Better. Here, we can stock up on weapons and grenades for the engine room. You have three choices, the assault rifle, shotgun, or rocket launcher. But to be honest, I always pick the shotgun and the rocket launcher. Also, going back a bit, funny enough, those invisible flood enemies, that's the only time you see them in the game. We make it to engineering and... Alert! The monitor has disabled all command access. We can't restart the count now. The only remaining option is to detonate the ship's fusion reactors. That should do enough damage to destroy Halo. So, as Cortana says, we need to open the exhaust couplings. From there, that will expose the shaft that leads to a primary fusion drive core. Then, you need to throw a grenade or shoot a rocket into it. You need to do this four times, with two each side, whilst also dealing with the Flood and Sentinels. 
trust me, I know this sounds complicated, but once you destroy the first two, you realise that it's actually quite easy to do it. It really is that simple. Plus, don't worry about running low on ammo. You can always go back to the armory to stock up, which is not too far from engineering. Plus, since you are facing the Sentinels and the Flood, if you leave them be, they'll just start fighting each other. And before you ask, no, you can't kill the Monitor. You can shoot as many weapons as you like. Unfortunately, he has the power of plot armor. Ah, we all love good inspiration music, don't we? After destroying the last two engines, we now make our escape. Wait, hang on, 419 is alive? To be honest, you deal with so much for the past three levels that you just assume she's dead. Or just you forgot she existed. Once we get out of the elevator, we perform the holy ritual of Halo, a Warthog finale run. We race through the ship with a five minute countdown as epic music plays. And let me tell you, you are constantly filled with adrenaline to escape. From the bendy corridors to enemies shooting at you, the leaps and the explosions, it's pretty epic and nerve wracking. We managed to get outside so that Echo 419 can pick us up. Guess what happens next? Yes, Echo 419 dies. She gets shot down by Banshees. Rest in peace, Echo 419. May you deliver more things in heaven. Oh no! Anyway... Cortana luckily finds a spare ship docked in Cargo Bay. With three minutes left on the clock, we make a dash for it. With of course Martin giving us the most suitable theme ever. This part always gives me anxiety. Anyways... Oh shit! I only have a minute and 30 seconds left! Come on, come on, out of my way! We did it. We destroyed Halo. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Master Chief asks Cortana if anybody else made it out, but Cortana says... Scanning. Just dust and echoes. We're all that's left. We learned that we were the only ones who managed to escape, whilst everyone else died. It's kind of an empty victory. Yes, I know you're going to say it, but shut it. Cortana does make a good point, stating that we did what we had to do. If the Flood made it out on the ring, then who's to say they won't arrive on Earth or terrorize an entire galaxy? Plus, taking out a Covenant Armada is always a plus. But with all that, we get this beautiful ending to a brilliant campaign. Plus, the level is obviously a 10 out of 10. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started. It's a shame that the Master Chief Collection doesn't show the credits of the first Halo game, but I suppose I could somewhat excuse it because Martin's music provides so much emotion at the final part that it satisfies me enough not to really have that credit scene. Son of a bitch, you're somehow alive! I guess that only means a sequel is coming out. 
Fun fact, if you beat the game on legendary mode, you get an extra cutscene. Come here, you motherfucker! Oh, shit. This is it, baby. Hold me. But, as the game says, Halo is finished. But we're only getting started. Now we can talk about Halo multiplayer. How's it? I mean, at least you're dead. Um, yeah, I guess that works. One thing I should add before talking about the multiplayer is that you'll be seeing weapons with different skins, and I'm guessing most of you grew up around the Xbox release of Halo. So to explain why we are playing on PC exclusive maps and weapons, plus weapons with different skins, is because if you remember what I said in the beginning, I'm playing the Halo 1 multiplayer on the Master Chief Collection, and on this collection it combines both the Xbox and PC versions of Halo 1. Another thing that helped launch the success of Halo was its glorious multiplayer, with each map having its own identity and playstyle tactics. You had a variety of game modes to play, the most popular one being Slayer, a simple game with a simple objective, score 20 points to win the game. Through kills, obviously, how else are you going to score the points, you dumbo? There are also other game modes as well, like Capture the Flag, Oddball, King of the Hill, and Race. But I'm only going to do Slayer because otherwise we would be here for too long, and this video is already long enough as it is. So, I got together with a friend and played all of the 19 maps with him. Obviously, I should say I grew up with the Xbox version, so we only had 8 maps, and I never really played the PC version, so I can't really say how many maps were released for the PC version. So, like in the campaign, I'm going to be ranking the maps a 5 out of 5 because I don't think there's much to talk about with the multiplayer maps. So I'll just give my thoughts about it, as well as just show some funny moments I had with my friend when we were playing the map. Also, I've set up our matches to start with random weapons, so then it goes a little bit faster when we are playing the matches. But, without further ado, let's look at our first map, Battle Creek. That <laughs> <laughs> game walk for five seconds, for God's sake! <laughs> so this map is quite small. It's a basic map that takes place in a creek. That's why it's called Battle Creek. Oh wow. What are you doing? <gasps> Jesus, what the heck was that? <laughs> 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 what the fuck, rude? <laughs> you, you know what? You know what? Where are you? Where are you? Meet your goddamn no! Stop it! <laughs> oh. Oh, <yeah. laughs> Underneath the bases is an underground section, so you have a place to cover from any harm that comes. And on the sides of the map is a little sniping spot. Furthermore, on the back of the bases is a teleporter that teleports you to either side of the map. Now, I would say this map is great if there was only one thing I didn't like about it. The rocket launcher. I'm jacked out of ready to- Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Does it feel good now, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. My Spartan gave like the weakest death cry ever. He just... Ugh. Does he can't be bothered anymore. It's just like, alright, I might as well accept my fate. <laughs> I... Oh, for... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't get up. That game walked for five seconds, for God's sake! <laughs> hey, guess what? Oh no. Thank God. I bet you are thinking that. Yep. <laughs> I'll definitely say in like oh. the reviews saying saying it's not great when you're facing it, but when you do have it, it's great. <laughs> I think. You're not gonna stop me. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Why are you having ah, it? Oh, so oh, 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 I mean, I can't even. I see what you mean now. I can't even get to where I want to go on the map. <laughs> Look, I don't hate the weapon. It's a great weapon. 
Oh, wait, hey, 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 hey! Oh my god, I was right on you! Jesus, that must have happened! What I have an issue is, is that there is no counter to it. The way I look at Halo maps is that if one player gets a really powerful weapon, then there should always be a weapon to counter it, or the map should be designed in a way to counter that weapon. Issue is, with Battle Creek, it doesn't really feel like there is any. The closest I can probably think of is the sniper rifle or a shot by the pistol, but because you're in a small area, you'll probably be easily blew up anyway. Or the shotgun, but you need to get close to do that and you can guess what happens next. Pretty much, if you get the rocket launcher, you've got a certified kill streak. With all that said, this map is a 4 out of 5 for me. Also, before we get onto the next map, uh, the multiplayer respawning in Halo 1 is just great. Sometimes it just spawns you right next to the enemy. Isn't that fun? So, uh, I give that map about, like, maybe a, a 7 out of 10. <laughs> great when you're I when you got the rocket, but terrible if, that. like, you're on the opposite side. I swear the rocket launcher on Halo 1 is almost the equivalent of the Prophet's Bane on Halo 5 now looking at it. Pretty much. <laughs> Upgrading in size, Sidewinder takes place in a snowy themed arena, with the addition of vehicles. Face it, you coward! I will on the op at the opportune moment. That's a, that, that sounds like an excuse to me. Oh, what the, the fuck? Jesus it. Christ, that's <laughs> the shit out of me! You can also get some high towers for some sniper positions. I mean, if the sniper rifle and ammo for it wasn't an indication enough. Also, this is a perfect time to introduce the gravity on Halo 1. Needles, wait! Oh, oh, come on! You can survive that <laughs> one of us, Step Master Chief! <laughs> now, I don't really have a lot of clips to tell you about it, but I will say that your Spartan is dense as fuck. One tiny tap of a vehicle, or a slight longer fall, and you're dead. God damn you, Bungie! <laughs> you may have made the greatest game in 2001, but god damn, you really need to put some. <laughs> like, I'm just glad they improved on the goddamn physics on this bloody game. Back to the map design, you also get these teleporters that teleport you to the sides of the map. I'm glad that this map is flexible if you want to traverse the area either by vehicle or by teleportation. Now, you may think to yourself, well I could just hop into a tank and just blast my way through. Yes, but actually no. What? Come on, are you serious? How does that count? <laughs> oh. Yeah, of course, apparently that instantly kills you in the tank. But the, the bloody logic in Halo 1 is sometimes so goddamn stupid. I'll say, yeah, definitely. I'd say, uh, what was it? The ones where you get in just slightly tapped by a vehicle and you're dead. <laughs> yep, that's a thing. <laughs> See, the issue with the tank is that the capsule that you enter in is not covered. Can you see where this is going? Yep, you would leave yourself to be killed by explosives or to be shot in the head. While this is a pain, and trust me it is, it does offer a good balance. Think about it. If there was a fully covered up tank and you were just being constantly being blown up on the map, it really wouldn't be any fun, would it? So it is good that you do have ways to win a match against a tank without needing to use another tank to fight it. Um, that should be interesting if they brought skulls to Halo 1. Multiplayer, I mean. Like, what do you mean by that? Uh, you know the skulls on the campaign where you can modify out things? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, oh. that was a clean shot. Ooh. In conclusion, this map is definitely a 5 out of 5 for me. It's got that good balance of vehicles and weapons, as well as offering good ways to getting around the map. Oh! Oh! That was lucky! <laughs> I just shot that at random! Ah! <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> Next up is Damnation, a map that takes place in a covenant building? To be honest, I'm not sure. I mean, it's got like the colors and the design of a covenant building, but other than that, I'm not sure. Oh, god damn it, how could that didn't hit your head? <laughs> this map has three different levels to it, and they're all interconnected with each other. The main thing is, is that there are two power-ups on the map. 
the bottom being the overshield, whilst the top is the camouflage. I do think that it's a bit coincidental that the person will get the camo and try to shoot people from above, whilst the people below will get the overshield, just so they have a chance to get to cover. Just make sure you watch your step. No, 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 no! Ah! Oh. Ha 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 ha! Also, this map is perfect for sniping. It's got a lot of good spots to snipe people. I like how we're using very expensive PCs to play a 2000 longer. <laughs> yeah, I'm peak. <laughs> and that's it, really. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to go on about this map, and some of them will be like that. Now, despite me having a miserable time on this map, now, to be fair, I did do this to myself. I did set the starting weapons to random, so it's just bad luck that my friend constantly got the rocket whilst I was stuck with a plasma pistol. This map is a 4 out of 5. <laughs> oh! Jesus Christ, that was close! Oh, hang on a minute. You thought you could fool me, Potter! Coming up next is Rat Race, a level that takes place underground with loads of interconnecting tunnels. I don't think you have much luck with first kick. Oh god! There's also this part of the map that allows you to get either the overshield or the camouflage. Really, that's what most of your time is probably doing. <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> oh, that's so Jesus. Oh, shut up, computer. Oh my God. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Um, it's got teleporters, and I won this time. No, no, no. Yes! Oh. Yes! Oh god, yes! I bet you're oh, happy. I am. I really am. Oh, thank god, finally, after like an, an hour's worth of a recording, I finally won. Something tells me it wouldn't have been so fun for you to upload Halo footage where you lost every single one. Oh my Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, other than that, this map is alright. 3 out of 5. Uh, Tom, I'm back now. Hello, killing spree. Ah. Oh, you <laughs> oh, Up next is a map that is actually quite good. Prisoner. A map that consists of three levels on each side of the map that also connect to each other, with an empty middle section. Except in the middle, there is a rocket launcher, plus a camouflage up for grabs. So you know what that means. So... Oh god, where have you gone? <laughs> I sort of hoping you see the rocket and take the bait, but that works. This map can be pretty chaotic, and I think that's the best part of it. The short space, the high levels, and the race to grab one of the best weapons, it fills you up with adrenaline. However, my point on Battle Creek is the same. The rocket launcher is a certified kill streak given. Great if you have it, terrible if you're dealing with it. But I don't think it's that bad compared to Battle Creek take a shot every time I said Battle Creek. On Prisoner, I felt like I had more options for cover and for counters compared to Battle Creek. Oh. Oh, you had a rocket as well, did you? Thanks for the ammo. Oh. I'll give you some more rockets in your face. <laughs> Thanks, I'll be returned the favour. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean by respawn, though? <laughs> it's fantastic. No, 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 no. Oh, that works. <laughs> Other than that, this map is fun, and one that is great if you want to jump into some chaotic madness. A 4 out of 5.
Also, I managed to come right back around and win the match. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that was tight. Very, very tight. That was interesting. That was. Oh. So it started off as you need like twelve kills ahead, and then I caught up, and then you won. <laughs> You're kidding, right? That oh! <laughs> You know, I think the tables are now so to it. <laughs> Next on the list is a unique map, Hangam High. It's a vast empty map with these little short pillars around the map that provide plenty of cover. There's also these branching pathways to go across from one side of the map to another. This map is perfect for sniping for obvious reasons. What? I really can't believe that though, we play all the Halo games on PC yet now and of course it's Halo 5 to PC, such a loss. I know, right? <laughs> Headed by one of the greatest games of all time. No. Where? What? Oh, hi. <laughs> You can tell that this map was purposely built for capture the flag gang types. Other than that, I'm saying that a lot, there isn't anything else I could provide to this map except for the bountiful placements of shotguns, snipers and rocket launchers across the map. At least you have plenty of options to deal with your enemies on the map. A 4 out of 5. Oh no 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 the hell? Yeah. Oh, oh come on! Are you kidding me? Well, that that one went a bit better than I thought. <laughs> I hope you like claustrophobia because chill out is the place for you. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this map. Good luck trying to stay alive for even for like 10 seconds because you'll probably die even before you take your first step. Mixed with Halo 1's bizarre respawn logic, yeah, you're not in for a great time. Yeah. For fuck's sake! <laughs> come on! <laughs> That was a very good start. There's not really much to say about it, because it's just not really that good of a map, really, in my honest opinion. A 2 out of 5. No! <laughs> <laughs> my sticky grenade in myself, that was... <laughs> well done. Victorious. Now this map, Derelict, is a bit better than Chill Out. Again, this is a short map, but a good kind of short map. There is plenty of space to move around in, plus the design of the map is a lot easier to navigate compared to Chill Out. Oh, I nearly killed you! <laughs> now that's just very rude. Yes, yes. How could you do that? That sounds like you got the rocket now you said that. No. I have to be small with like the goddamn city is guns in the game. You also have a top section of the map that can be reached by teleporters, and in the middle is an overshield. You also get some powerful weapons on the sides of the map in these short tunnels. If anything, this map kinda looks like a territorial arena, but in space. This map feels like a training area where you can test your different playstyles, close or far combat due to the shotgun and sniper rifle placements. Plus, with random weapons, it gets really chaotic, so it's an automatic plus for me. This map is a 4 out of 5. This map, Boarding Action, is probably the most interesting to me. It's ship to ship combat, except it's in space, and you can't really move the ship. Essentially, you have two platforms separated from each other, and the two platforms have equally the same designs on all five levels. You can get to each side using the teleporters located at the top and bottom levels. And that's it, really. Again, there's not much I can add. Really, if anything, this map is kinda, kinda boring. 
I suppose it would be better if we had more players involved, but because there's only me and my friend, nothing much really happens. And the only other thing I can think about for this map is that this map is a good place to test your sniping skills. You should try playing this on a 16 player. You don't really get a chance to take cover. <laughs> no, I imagine not. <laughs> Spree. <laughs> yeah, this level is a 3 out of 5. Again, the map design is interesting to me, but I don't think it's used to its full potential. But before we get into the next map, guess how we feel about this map? No, no, not this one. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. Yep. It's gonna get ugly. Right. Chiron, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, is a good example of how to not create a good multiplayer map. It's like the designer for Chill Out came into the office one day and said, Hey guys, I know my last map was quite claustrophobic, so for my next map, how about we just crank that shit up to like maximum and just put like a shitload of teleporters in there as well? And that's what you get with Chiron. Claustrophobic corridors and short-ass rooms mixed in with loads of unnecessary teleporters. I mean, even looking at the map preview for the map, it's just... What the, what the fuck is this map design? It does not matter how many times I play this map, I can never remember the pattern. It took me and my friend 20 minutes to finish our game on this short map. I wasn't even mad or upset that I lost, just relief that I no longer had to play this piece of shit map. Yeah, if you couldn't guess it, it's a 0 out of 5. Congratulations, Chiron. You're only remembered for being the worst map on Halo 1. Luckily, though, we get treated to probably the most iconic Halo multiplayer map ever, Blood Gulch. So, what makes Blood Gulch so iconic, to the point where it was remade on Halo 2, served as a major inspiration for the map Valhalla in Halo 3, as well as Ragnarok in Halo 4? as well as just being called one of the best multiplayer maps to grace any first-person shooter on the official Xbox magazine. There we oh go. Oh, hello. Oh! Hello. Shit! <laughs> 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 goddamn warthog is in my way! Aside from nostalgia's significance, this map is so beautifully designed that it's hard to ignore. It's simple, but you also have these nice design choices to stop it being so boringly simple. You have your two bases on each side of the map, colour coded as red and blue, with a big open area between them, and in those open fields are these lumps that you can use to your advantage, to take cover from fire or use as an aerial advantage to shoot down players. On the sides there is also some caves and caverns you can use as well to get around the map. There is also placement of different vehicles, ranging from ghosts, warthogs, tanks and banshees. Plus, the design of the map also allows for some good sniping matches as well, as each base has a sniper rifle at the top of the building, and the sides of the maps also have ledges for players to take good shots. It also feels like this map was perfectly designed for any game mode, Slayer, Capture the Flag, King of the Hill, etc. It definitely feels like a lot of effort was put into this map, and it really has paid off well. It's honestly one of the best multiplayer maps I've ever played. In fact, this map is so iconic that in Halo games that don't have it, people take to remake that level in Forge mode, specifically for Halo Reach and onwards. So yeah, there's not much to say other than that this level has a legendary status in the world of multiplayer first-person shooter games. A definite 5 out of 5. And plus, let's not forget that this map also has cultural significance as well. Since the early internet days, Red vs Blue did their internet series on this exact map, so it holds a very important cultural significance for the fans. I've personally never watched the show, but I can understand the importance of this map to those fans. No, 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 don't you dare, you can't Oh, but the fucking warthog was in the way again! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. That warthog has saved my life. <laughs> Wizard is pretty much similar to Derelict, a gladiatorial arena, but on Halo this time, with a centre in the middle. But the design of the map is different. Around the map there are these little platforms that you can get up on, and on the four corners of the map are power-ups and weapons. Other than that, I can't really say much about Wizard. It's pretty much similar to Derelict, but I prefer the design of Derelict. So it's a 3 out of 5 for me. It doesn't really leave that much of an impact for me. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Up next is longest. Well, if it means longest in suffering, then oh 
boy, I'm in luck, because this level is pretty much long corridors. Oh, did I also mention that there is also a second level in this map? So, if you want to rain hell on your enemies, or be ruthlessly gone down, then this map is for you! Ah. Oh, fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I bet you just waiting to respawn a rocket now. It would be useful. I get, but how I the get fuck it up? Yeah. How the fuck it up? <laughs> yeah, that's my biggest issue with this map. The fact that there is a second level just makes it annoying because, as I've said before, you'll probably be gunned down or blown up easily before even taking your first steps. Plus, you can also get a camouflage and an overshield power-up, which only makes your suffering or experience better. Can you rock? <laughs> <laughs> the, the power of overshield. Luckily though, you do get some weapons on the map to counter this, such as the flamethrower, or the sniper rifle, or just the good old fashioned pistol. Well, if you don't die first. I'll give this map a 2 out of 5. I prefer multiplayer maps that are more open instead of tight corridors, but at least you do get some good counter weapons to use if anyone's on the second level, but at this point you'll probably be dead anyway. Little piggy, little piggy, where have you gone? You just a fucker! No! 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 Oh come on! I hate it when you do that. Well, I need stealth to get that off. Well, I just pretty much kept going for that overshield and used it to the advantage, really. Fair enough. Death Island is a big ass island filled with probably the most amount of vehicles. It's a solid map. In fact, sometimes I'm convinced that this map is pretty much similar to the level in the campaign mission, The Silent Cartographer, one of my favourite levels. I do think that there is a slight issue with the map, is that it is so damn big. I think this map is designed to have multiple people play it, so if you have a small amount of people play it, well, the match can be a bit slow sometimes. Oh. Oh. Well, that was a bad time, What the- What the- no, no, oh, 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 god, shit, no, oh, no. Right. Ah, ah, ah. Right. Ah, ah. 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 Ah.
You know what? I maybe should bring a sniper. I'm gonna bring a sniper to that fight now. Wolf! Wolf! There you go. <laughs> but my heart's jump out of my mouth. Oh, for God's what? sake! <laughs> Stop it! No! Oh! Ah! Oh. Phew, that was a close one. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much if you manage to get this spot, then you've earned yourself an easy win. Oh, and by the way, you don't get Banshees on this map, so there goes that one useful vehicle that could have helped. Well, I mean, you can use other vehicles to stop a player from using this exploit, plus you can snipe them as well, so they're not that invincible, but the Overshield, the constantly spawning sniper, and the rocks don't exactly make it easy to do so. Oh, and don't forget about Halo 1's spawn logic, so you might just respawn in that exploit area after you were just killed by a person using it. So yeah, despite that exploit, it is a good solid map that takes the ideas of Blood Gulch and tries something different with it. A 4 out of 5 for me. <laughs> That's lucky! You shot the sniper away from you. It landed right next to me. You fucking piece of shit! Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my! Oh, thank God! Oh, thank God. <laughs> you did. Oh, that is just luck. That's just bad luck. I thought it was gonna go in my way. <laughs> oh come on! I'm looking forward to that. Stop thinking that's a. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think I backed up on a health kit, so it refilled my health instantly. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Come on. Okay, that's what's being insulting. <laughs> Here comes the next map, Infinity. And I do appreciate how the map is modelled to be like the infinite symbol. I appreciate stuff like that. And as soon as you load into the map, you realise that you probably should have invited more friends to play this map. This map is big. Like, very big. Almost to a point where going on foot will probably take you a whole year just to get to the centre of the map. So going in a vehicle is a necessity in order to get around the map. At least you get teleporters around the map. Now, I'm not going to rate this stage, because me and my friend agree that this map is better when you have a big group of people playing on it. You see, unlike Dead Island, where yes, it was a big map, the island was small and confined, so it wouldn't take you long to get around the map. This map is just so big that it feels tiring just to find one person, so I think this map was really purposely designed for a big amount of players. So, big apologies if this was your favourite map growing up, but I didn't have the time to really get a bunch of people to play this map. On to the next. Up next is a personal favourite of mine, Timberland. This map feels like a combination of both Blood Gulch and Sidewinder. Blood Gulch for its straight two bases on opposite sides, with the terrain being a lot bumpier, and Sidewinder's design on the bases. Kid you not, they are practically the same. So if you're as blind as a fly, this map takes place in the woodlands, full of big hills to help with combat, to take cover or use as an advantage. In the centre of the map is an overshield, again similar to how Blood Gold is designed. You can also obtain camouflage power-ups in the waterfalls at the corner of the map, and you have your plethora of vehicles to use. Except for Banshee, sadly. Oh no, <laughs> not the very slow pink needles. Uh, can you stop doing that? Really? <laughs> now, as you can imagine, with the combination of both good solid maps, it's pretty obvious to say that this map is also a good solid map. The design of the map is simple, like Blood Gulch, but it has the fun options of traversal of Sidewinder. In fact, whenever I play Halo with friends, I nearly always pick this map first. Before I get into the obvious ranking of this stage, I want to show you something. I find it funny that we got so distracted that we just started talking about Halo 5. Regardless if we were getting blown up, shot, or burned to death, it was just so funny to think about. 
I, I kind of think um, the reason why Halo 5 was the way it was was because I, um, um, the, uh, the cooperative the shooters were quite popular, and I think they were getting a resurgence back in the time because uh, Over well, like, when, did, when did Overwatch come out? Do you remember when, Do you when remember did Halo 5 come out? It came out October 2015. I suppose like a resurgence in games, or maybe just they were looking at examples. So people were really into, uh, you know, Left 4 Dead and Payday 2. Those are uh, co-op based games where you have four members uh, to like be the mission whatnot. So they thought, hmm, why don't we do the exact same thing? Because I think um, many people didn't mind a Halo co-op. Because, I mean, uh, in Left 4 Dead 2, you can literally mod the game to be a Halo game. So... I don't know. Also notice now a Halo 4, but it's like criticised in some way when it came out. But now people are saying, you know what, this game is actually not bad. I, I don't know about that, but I think my opinion is still the same there. I, I enjoyed my time with Halo 4, but it's only the beginning missions, and then everything else in the middle, I can barely remember because I was that and bored by it. And then, oh, okay. and then the end part I remember because that was actually fun. I think it was only more that those comments came from the people who decided to revisit Halo 4 on the PC, they just sort of wanted to see it again. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Also, I suppose it's a bit of a controversial yeah. opinion. Um, I, uh, I, I rather prefer, I rather prefer like, Halo 2 or like 3, 3, and I don't and I really don't get why get people, like, um, say, Halo 4 is the best Halo, Halo game in this franchise, Halo you're like, bitch, like, have you played Halo, Halo 2 or 3? But, yeah, like, exactly. but I, I, I think I can understand why they might <laughs> like it, because of the fast-paced movement and whatnot, it feels more, yeah. more you know, um, yeah, whatnot. Um, whatnot. But, whatnot. this map is a definite 5 out of 5 for me. Also, here's me getting stuck. Why they did it? I suppose that's why they did it. And also, I suppose they were also, more focused on like the whole like esport of Halo, rather than the actual story. The actual story. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? I can't move. I can't move. What the? I I cannot move. What's going wrong? I I don't know. I think I'm stuck. Okay. Like if you see me, don't kill me. But like I can't get out. Like, I'm, I, stuck I, I'm stuck on a hill! Okay, there's Like, in a place you would not <laughs> suspect. You need me to help you out, or...? Uh, well, yeah, I need oh, you to kill yeah, me, but don't kill, kill me. don't kill me. Like, you need to see, need like, to my, see situation. Like my situation. Ah. Are you outside? Yes, like, yes, look! I can't I move! Can't behind move. you, behind you. Oh, you can see. Yeah. Oh! See, I can't move! <laughs> That? I'm looking at your spotting finger and it looks like you're falling. I, I don't. <laughs> help me! Help me! I think the only way out is. Can, can you grenade yourself? I can. I think you're here. <laughs> you should have killed me. Really That's for sure. Ice fields. To be honest, it's hard to say what I really think about this map. It's not a bad map, it's a good map if anything. It has the standard two bases on each side, both have a selection of vehicles except for the Banshee. Seriously, what does Bungie have against Banshees? The only thing to note is that the, in the center of the map is a bridge that you can get to either side by a vehicle or using teleporters. And on this bridge you get the overshield and the rocket launcher. You also get access to sniper rifles on the side entrances of the bridge. And that's it really. I can't really say much because after going through 18 maps it's hard to find anything that makes this map stand out. But again, it's not a bad map. It's a good map to play, but there's nothing really here I can talk about except the bridge. A three out of five. Oh, I guess uh, so. I, I, I knew as soon as I missed that shot, I was going. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what? what the? What? You what? died. Well, how? I did not expect that. Oh, I, I, I didn't hear like a, a gunshot or a whack or anything, I just suddenly had a cardiac arrest. Oh my god, I really have been through 19 multiplayer maps, haven't I? Drivophobia, the last map we are taking a look at, with probably the most interesting name, considering that the definition of gyrophobia is the fear of driving over bridges. 
and this map somewhat conveys that. You have a long bridge surrounded by darkness with a big empty hole underneath, so watch your step. Same with the previous maps, you have your red base and blue base, but they have teleporters that teleport you to the sides of the map. A perfect position for sniping people across the other side, or on the bridge. Oh god, now I see why Bungie named this map Gyrophobia. And don't forget your vehicles, like warthogs, ghosts, banshees, finally! And strangely enough, no tanks. Weird how though most maps that have vehicles, we always got tanks with banshees, sometimes tanging along, but this time we have banshees, but no tanks. Which kinda sucks, because you have no good counter to the banshee. Well, I say that, but you do have warthogs that can shoot down the banshee, or just head under the bridge or in the building for cover, so there are ways to avoid the banshee. There are two different levels of the bridge. The top part is where you would want to be most of the time, since that has all the good weapon drops, power-ups, and most of the vehicles. I think the lower part is mostly used as cover, and you do get ghosts to safely drive across the bridge. I like how of all the noises it cancels out, I can hear your fingers touching the controller. <laughs> Oh, oh. I'm surprised that worked! Oh, for God's sake! Oh, for God's sake! Now, you can fly up to the top of the bridge, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Because while it does give you a good sniping spot, but by the time you reach it, you'll probably be sniped before even taking aim. With all that being said, I do like this map. It's a fun sniping and vehicle experience that, again, I always make sure that me and my friends play this map. A good old 4 out of 5. Plus, I managed to win my last match. Yes! Wait, hang on, just give me a sec. Better. So if it's not obvious enough, Halo 1's multiplayer was amazing. You had amazing and iconic maps to play through and you could endlessly teabag your friends. In fact, Halo invented the very art of teabagging. You couldn't think of Halo without teabagging. And that's pretty much it. I think I've covered everything for Halo 1. So, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and if you've enjoyed this video- OH GOD damn it! Now as you can imagine, Halo 1 was a massive universal success for changing not only the way we play first person shooters, but for also helping the sales of the original Xbox. It's no surprise the Xbox version of Halo won more than 40 awards. The game's immense popularity led to labels such as Halo Clone or Halo Killer for games who tried to be like Halo. And of course Halo spawned many sequels, books, films, a TV show. <laughs> so, it was only a matter of time until a remake was going to come out. In the ancient year of 2011, Microsoft revealed that 343 Industries, the current studio that make the Halo games, would be releasing an anniversary remake of Halo Combat Evolved, and that the release date would be on the 10th anniversary of the original game's release, 15th of November. In the remake, 343 would add stuff from the previous games, such as skulls, terminals, achievements, and improved graphics. However, the multiplayer was going to use the Halo Reach gameplay engine, so even though we wouldn't exactly get the same Halo 1 multiplayer, we could still play on the classic multiplayer maps that were originally on the Xbox release. And so, the game was released, and it received generally positive reviews, such as scores like 8 or 9 out of 10. Luckily, the Master Chief Collection includes the Classic and the Anniversary Edition. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through like every single mission again, because otherwise we would be here for another 10 years. So, why don't we just have a quick little look, shall we? Oh! Oh, look at that! Look at that! Everything just looks so good and highly detailed! Even the music is remastered! Though, to be honest, I do prefer the classic. And oh my god, the weapon sounds so good! Blast door is closing. The cover.
Covenant are destroying the- Okay, now I know what you're really thinking. What does my favourite level look like? Just as great as I remember. Everything just looks so well polished. I'm glad that 343 really went out there to make the original Halo fresh again. Though the design of the Golden Elite is not a favourite of mine, again I prefer the classic design. Answer, pretty bloody terrifying, and oh my god, they are beautifully ugly. Shame it still doesn't save the design of this level. Now you can play one of the worst maps on Halo, but we mastered it! Halo Combat Evolved always holds a special place in my heart. Due to it being the first game I ever played on the Xbox, and without it I wouldn't have gotten into FPS games. Plus, I was introduced to the world of Xbox where I grew up playing all kinds of different games. It's sort of weird, Halo introduced me to FPS as well as the console itself and the many other great games that I got to play on the original Xbox. I have so many fond memories of playing this game, playing all the different multiplayer maps, playing co-op. Yes, I know there was a co-op mode where you get to play the campaign together, but I don't have the time to do that, so SHUT UP! Doing all of this at sleepovers or just playing it casually, all of it. Really, without Halo, I wouldn't really be here talking about video games and my passion for them. It's always good to look back on video games and specifically a game that pretty much changed your life and showed you why you fell in love with video games in the first place. And that's all I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to thank you all again for helping me reach over 100 subscribers. It's really utterly amazing to me. Again, I just want to express my very, very sincere gratitude helping me reach over 100 subs. It's not a big number by any means, but I'm just really, really happy that by like, over 100 of you people really enjoy my content and subscribing to the channel and whatnot. It really makes me feel like I've done something really good. Thank you all very, very much. And I hope this video about one of my favourite games of all time has uh, satisfied you all. So, if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you like, comment, favour and subscribe to see more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, and if you, th if you ask me about what I thought about the Halo TV series on Paramount Plus, well, I think it's shit.